Just a few words to offer the invitation this evening. I'd like to uh, get you thinking with a picture of a familiar face. This uh, man, Elon Musk, has really shot to uh, celebrity status. I'm pretty sure we, most of us know his name. Uh, he's the owner of Tesla and SpaceX and uh, Twitter, right? And all these uh, you know, huge, profitable businesses. And so sometimes there are conflicts of interest there. And so about a year ago, uh, there was a, a clip that I saw uh, where he was being asked, you know, as, as the owner of Tesla, uh, a lot of the investors in his car company were getting a little perturbed by some of the things he was saying on Twitter. And so in this interview, the, the person was asking him, you know, aren't you concerned about the, the value of your company that these investors might turn and, and the value of your company might go down because of the things that you're saying? Don't you have any concern about that? And uh, Elon Musk's reply, he said he was, he was loosely quoting from The Princess Bride, if you guys are familiar with that old movie, but he, he was referring to a, a scene where a, a man was uh, finally able to, to fight uh, the man who had killed his father. And in, in his loose quote, he said, he said, offer me money. Offer me power. I don't care. And the reporter there says, so you just don't care? You, you want to share what you have to say? And he says, I'll say what I want to say. And if the consequence of that is losing money, so be it. It's a, such a bold statement. It, it really uh, made an impression, I think, on everybody who's seen this video and it's gone viral. Offer me money. Offer me power. I don't care. I'll say what I want to say, and if the consequence of that is losing money, so be it. That's boldness. He can say whatever he wants. He can't really be manipulated, right? You can't give him more money than he's already got. You can't give him more power than he's already got. He can't be bought, right? That's, boy, that must be some serious freedom. And, you know, my first reaction to that is, boy, that must be nice, you know. Maybe when I'm a billionaire, one day I can have the same attitude, right? Because, uh, yeah, if he loses half his company, he's still got way more money than anybody else. Uh, so, you know, if, if, I, if I speak my mind, well, I could lose my job, and it's the only job I got. And if I lose a friend, I may never get him back. I don't even have that many of them. Uh, I might lose my reputation, right? But there's a better reaction than that, right? I think the better reaction is recognizing that this should be my attitude if I recognize who I really am. A child of God. Because we have that exact same position, if not greater, when we consider that I'm a child of God and I have an inheritance waiting for me in heaven. And so, in a much greater sense, I truly have nothing to lose. This was Jesus' mindset, a victorious mindset, one who had already overcome the world. No one could touch him because he was serving the Father. Notice over in John 19, verses 10 and 11, that's where he's speaking with Pilate. Pilate said to Jesus, who wouldn't answer the questions that he was asking, he says, you do not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and I have authority to crucify you? And Jesus answered, you have no authority over me unless it had been given to you from above. In a roundabout way, he's saying, the authority that you have, I gave you, because he is God. And so he's not concerned about Pilate's ability to take away his life. He gave him that authority, and of course, the plan was for him to die on the cross. Over in John 16, verse 33, Jesus is teaching his apostles. John 16, 33 says, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. 
He recognizes we're going to face tribulations, but through your tribulations you can have peace because he has overcome the world. Present tense. 2,000 years ago, present tense, he has overcome the world, and that's who we serve. That's who we are, uh, are with. Just like it says in Romans 8.38, if God is for us, who is against us? Nobody can, can bring a charge against God's elect. Turn over to 1 John. I want to take two readings from 1 John, and then the lesson will be yours. 1 John 4 and verse 4. John is wanting us, the members of the Lord's church, to recognize who we are. 1 John 4 and verse 4. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. When we have God on our side, then there's no one who can do anything to us. We need to recognize that is our position. Greater is he that who is in you than he who is in the world. Now flip back to chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse 12. I'm writing to you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven you for his name's sake. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I have written to you, children, because you know the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Present tense. Is that the way you view your position? It's a position of strength and confidence when facing any opposition in the world. We are strong. We have the word of God. We have overcome the evil one. There's no one who can defeat us when we are on the Lord's side. Offer us money. It's not a temptation. We have treasure in heaven. Offer us power. It reminds me of the temptations of Christ, right? There's no more power you can offer to Christ, and there's no more power you can offer to me because God has all power, and I'm on his side. He's given us that power to speak in his name. And just like Elon says, he says, I'll say what I want to say. We can say, I'll say what God wants me to say. And I'm not going to worry about the consequence of losing anything that I have. Losing money, losing power, losing my life. If I lose my life, so be it. The invitation is to you tonight. Will you declare your faith in Jesus Christ? Or are you going to worry about the consequences of doing so? It's a controversial thing in this day and age to say in the presence of all, that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on a cross and that three days later, God raised him from the dead. And now, if I serve him faithfully, I can go to heaven and be with him for all eternity, but only if I render obedience to the gospel. That's controversial to say. Here, we're all ready to support you. If you want to make that good confession, we are all on your side, and God is encouraging you uh, and exhorting you to obey him before it's everlastingly too late. When you leave those doors, it's going to become harder to make that good confession every day of your life. But that's what we're called to do, to do it with boldness. Are you weighing that decision against what you might lose? Maybe it's family, maybe it's friends, or a relationship with somebody who you're close with who doesn't love God like you do. Consider all those things as loss in comparison to the great things that we gain by gaining a relationship with God. You are called to adoption as sons, to be a son of God, a child of God. If you need to become a Christian, do so tonight. Declare your faith in God and put on Christ in baptism. Or perhaps you've lost your boldness and you've been unwilling to say what God wants you to say, regardless of the consequences. Maybe the devil's lies 
his, his uh, wiles to try to silence you, to accept his offers of temporary wealth, temporary power. Maybe those things have shut your mouth and you need to repent. Whatever your need is, however you may need to repent to make your life right with God, we invite you to come tonight while we stand and sing our invitation song. <coughs>